and welcome Mahesh. I hope you're doing well and I'm so, so blessed and pleased to welcome you in this podcast that is Let's Talk with Vitiligo. So tell me how are you today? I'm doing great and I'm doing much great and uh, the moment this meeting started looking at your smile, looking, looking at your energy. So <laughs> thanks on your podcast. So I'm very proud. Thank you. Amazing. So Mahesh, on Instagram you have been known by the name I am Scarman. I need to know what exactly I am Scarman does. Who is he as a person other than his Instagram profile? <laughs> well, that's an interesting question to start with. So thank you so much. So Scarman uh, is an uh, initiative uh, that I started to create an awareness uh, regarding Vitiligo. And um, so it's a journey which is going on and the Scarman name also uh, indicates and I'm trying to portray that uh, some a man who came out with all the scars. Okay. So okay. the man who starts is Scarman. So it's just vaguely, I mean, I'm a filmmaker, so it very creatively came out when I was transforming my body. So mm-hmm. uh, that's how the Scarman came out. Um, and. Uh, well, I'm trying my best, uh, if you can see uh, in my profile, I'm trying my best uh, to convey uh, my journey and my effort uh, to um, make people aware about what is Vitiligo and uh, um, how can you, um, uh, what to say, make yourself stronger with Vitiligo and uh, mm-hmm. nothing to stop, just because you have Vitiligo and uh, that's all is my messages and uh, i'm not sure how successful i am but if i'm uh, if you are having me on your podcast that means i have reached somewhere so that uh, people like you are recognizing me i'm so certain about that because your profile is uh, basically something i looked up to when i was very you know nervous and do not want to exactly face people uh, it was one of your profile that showed up and I was like, okay, like people are embracing Vitiligo. Even in India, I can do too. So thanks to you that is here today. At some point in time, I believe your profile had contributed a lot in becoming me, me. <laughs> See, that's, that's all the achievement is. If I, have, if I can measure the achievement, I can measure with your strength, with your confidence, with your smile and with your achievement as well. So thank you so much for considering my profile and my effort, uh, whatever I'm doing as a small contribution to your achievement today. So thank you so much. Certainly, certainly. That brings to me like uh, the very first question is when exactly you saw your vitiligo patch appeared, like what is your very first memory with vitiligo? Uh, this is a very much a common question where everyone wants to know about it and no matter and doesn't matter how many times you answer that people are still curious to know about it and it's a very important question say and before i start answering anything i would like to say that whatever sir on your podcast uh, it's only based on my experience my knowledge my research and uh, my content that i spoken to different type of people okay right. so many people that but i respect their decision so having said that, um, Vitiligo appeared on my body at 8 or 9. Um, I was just playing something, um, maybe I was cycling or I was playing some uh, our regional game in the village. So I fell and I had a one cut on my elbow and on my knee. And after uh, after the wound has been healed, uh, that is when, when the skin was supposed to uh, change to its original color, I saw a white scratch on my body. So, but that time in during 90s, uh, we were not aware about what is vitiligo and uh, different type of people in different region and uh, uh, they name it in a different way, they call it in a different way. So, um, so I was not aware about this is exactly vitiligo and I was least bothered. But when people started recognizing that and started telling hundreds of things is when it scared me up. Oh shit, okay, um, uh, there's something wrong with my body. Okay. And, uh, so that's how we started uh, at the age of 8-9 uh, because of one uh, small uh, scratch that I had while I was playing. Okay, and like uh, do you think somewhere having a visible skin condition like vitiligo it impacted your childhood or maybe the budding teenage years of your life at somewhere or some way sort of? who were born in 80s, 90s and who grew up in 2000s, early 2000s, right? If they come out and say that no, it never impacted me. I don't believe it. Trust mm. me, I don't believe it. Right. It has uh, uh, impacted them and it has impacted me very strongly as well. 
because that time there was no social media what we have to understand what kind of generation we are coming out no much of rapid news news channels and not much of ngos who talk about even today there is no much ngos who talk about vitiligo let it be bald hair let it be skin tight let it be fumbling let it be any such kind of things these are not considered to be a serious issues with people who which can create them and suppression or a depression but it it will create it's a very silent 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 suppressive depression for a longer duration you want to run away from that but it will not leave you this was the era in 80s and 90s and 2000 early which i grew up it definitely impacted me and it definitely made me very disconfident definitely made me start thinking that i should not wear that such type of clothes and now today in 2023 we sit and discuss about this it looks very silly it looks are yaar is this is nothing don't worry come out of this it has become more verbal than action but those day we had no social media no influencers like you no wonderful people like you who could call us and tell us or even that's the reason even i practice in fact for you also i message saying that don't worry you're doing great don't right. worry you're beautiful there was no such communication that time we used to right, hide right. our our own parents with with no knowledge about how the so, uh, society is going to accept they used to ask ask me to wear full hand and go outside mm. it was 20 okay i'm i'm telling after 28 years of journey the vitiligo on my body In the, in the year of 2020, when the COVID hit the world, when I was sitting after I delivered one of the most, most successful feature film in Canada film industry, which is Mahira, I am sitting there and I am started thinking, what else? What is next? And I started feeling depressed after the success of my feature. Oh film. my God! I started feeling depressed and I was feeling so dull. That is when I started decided. I started to decide that no, I should come out of this one or the other way. Trust me, sorry to use this sentence that I really wanted to hurt my body, but my mind told me no. If you want to hurt your body, give that pain to the body which can construct your body, and that is when I made my eight patch. Okay. Okay. So, for example, I wanted to say, you want body, you paint your body, but hmm. give, give pain to your body. Don't destroy hmm. your body. Hmm. That's gonna happen. After twenty-eight long years of long fight. For the first time, I started wearing half and t-shirts in 2020. Oh my God! Not <laughs> okay. So that 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 way it has affected my childhood, my personal life. Uh, it might be relationship. And at this point, I wouldn't call a day impacted on me. It was an battle internally which I realized in 2020. It's uh-huh. not the external. Who who is talking by yourself? So hmm. that's when I came. Okay, I like Mahesh. You are uh, with a skin condition. You are into uh, industry, film industry. That is, you know, you're very much on the camera, in front of the camera. People do watch you all the time. So, like, what was that transformation like for you? From being a boy who used to hide his patches under his uh, baggy t-shirts to someone who is out there in front of the camera without t-shirts at times as well. So, how was that transformation? and how eventually you you know made yourself so actively uh, going into that film career choosing like very unconventional path <laughs> so how did that just in question because i am in that profession most people will be very curious to understand because now if we, if we just name it industry entertainment industry as entertainment we have this myth in our mind that right. entertainment Person, a boy who is looking six feet and six pack. Mm. Okay, for me always. I was in London for four years, and that is when, when I changed the country, different region, religion, color of people, culture. I started understanding and reading and uh, studying about these kind of things. Then I realized, no, the world is, it is the way it is. It is mm-hmm. us who has. Are in the part of that world. Okay, the world is not going to affect me. If I'm in London, I adopt that. If I'm in India, I adopt that. Now, when I when I decide to come back to uh, to India in 2013, because my mom wanted me to come back, I decided what not to do than deciding what I'm supposed to do. So that okay. cleared. Now, next 50 percent became my 100 percent concentration on what I'm supposed to do. Now, what I didn't wanted to do is that I didn't wanted to join any corporate. Now mm-hmm. came a question that what 
Now this 50% of my decision is my 100% focus on what I'm supposed to do. So I wanted to be an entertainment industry, not specifically in films. It might be singing. I come from a martial art background. It might be martial art. It might be dance. It might be choreography. Anything. I have even done in a three idiot film as an first assistant choreographer along with Amir Khan. So I had that background, but. somewhere the story i wanted to tell story i wanted to make the i wanted to create characters i wanted mm-hmm. to be there as a so i decided uh, i want to get into films as a director so i joined okay. london film academy even when i was joining london film academy it was a it was such confusion that should i or should i not will the industry accept or not so i finished my course i got my certification came to india the first thing i faced was my very good friends okay and they are innocent when they are saying that but it hit me hard like oh you have such kind of kin type how can you fit into industry hmm. how can you do i am not i am not coming as an actor here i want to come as a director trust me today and confess because i was scared hmm. i was very scared to be i told no i am coming as a director and producer so it was a very very difficult path for me to change my whole lifestyle whole career and restart my life here as into the film industry So it's been ten mm-hmm. years, and I'm uh, as much as whatever I have achieved. I'm very proud. Now, when the career started in film industry, again people started questioning: How will mm-hmm. you survive? Will and I have to mean so you know, film industry is like this, like this, like. So I took my time. I took my time. When my first feature film happened, Mahira, I did a cameo role. Okay. Mm-hmm. When I did my also, I was not confident. Surely, I was. If you can watch my film in Amazon Prime, it's called Mahira. When the cameo okay. role, I. Was, Sequence. I am wearing a full hand uh, uh, kurta because I played a, a Muslim character called uh, Sauti. I was wearing a full hand because I wanted to hide my vitiligo. Mm-hmm. So it was one after COVID. Uh, I decided that uh, I should do something about vitiligo. That's when I um, announced my feature film. Uh, it's called Billy Chuki Halli Hakki. Roughly tra- translated in uh, English, it's called White Patches and Village Birds. वो हिंदी में बोलते हैं ना लाइक गाँव की चिड़िया It's a wrong uh-huh. one. Okay. So Vitali go. He gets married to a very beautiful woman from the next village, but he falls under confusion that why such beautiful girl agreed to marry him. So okay. From there, the st- finally, uh, from the place, as you asked me, uh, being in uh, a, a not so much confident person, to here announcing a film on Vitali go. Now this will be the first ever film which will be made in India on a topic of Vitali go. Right. 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 That's amazing. So, like, what advice would you give someone who has a skin condition, or maybe something related to very visible, and they want to come into like film domain, or how is the response of the industry today? I tell you, very interesting thing. If you want to come into film industry, that is your decision, your hmm. journey, that is your path. Just because I set some example, it cannot become your route of travel. <laughs> you inspiration, okay? I okay. can walk with you. You know, I right. can take an. My advice wouldn't make or shouldn't make any difference to anybody's what they want to achieve. Mm-hmm. Okay. Not put yourself in a situation to ask what is your advice. I am no one to advise you. Okay, mm-hmm. you are of. And I am as same rank as you. Yes, I might be mm-hmm. older than you. I might be a celebrity in Bangalore, but it doesn't make any difference because you are journey to a journey. So having right. said that, much to everyone. Hmm. Seek advice from anybody. Do not turn. You can look up to somebody, but don't yes. look up that old. Because of you, I am doing this. Now you hmm. give me a credit. Created the inspiration, but I gave back the credit to you because you received that credit from me. Otherwise, mm. you wouldn't be. Unless you are ready to receive it, I am not mm-hmm. ready to give it to you. Right. Asking, I want that. I want that. You know, you have to start doing it. So that mm-hmm. is my advice. Keep That's yourself really real. That's really nice. <laughs> oh, keep yourself real. Don't um, put anybody in that position to control you. Or you don't sit in any position that because of him or her I want to become who who, who I am. No, <laughs> nobody asked. Carmen, nobody asked you to create a podcast. I remember. I right. still I don't know. For your first message, what is it? Yeah, yeah. 
it's a foolish of me if i sit here and oh see i made you who you are no i will be the biggest fool if i do that now what i should be happy is my work has reached you mm-hmm. now that is my right mm-hmm. for journey i am nobody to build or break you so mm-hmm. you should be put around you that nobody should climb it and nobody should break it but yet you should be very protected under that so that's amazing actually that is a very you know honest advice to anyone not just someone who has bit ego it's just for like everyone sort of with that being said mahesh i just want you know ask one last question maybe second last is like are you very comfortable today with your patches or do you still feel there's some sort of thought in your brain when you're about to go out in the public or something like that this is very very beautiful question you asked this is one of my favorite question now the question seems to be very simple right now don't sit in any position to advise anybody you asked the previous question right don't sit in position to advise anybody unless hmm. you have come up right now don't start telling the journey oh i did this i did this i didn't know tell people what they can do mm-hmm. trusted in knowing your journey but what is the cash back that they can they can get it now mm-hmm. now if i was not comfortable about what i am today you ask me i can take off my shirt today i can show mm-hmm. my abs today i am saying that is if i would be sitting your fitness is good somebody comes out and say no 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 there is a body shaming that this this and all you like to be fat be fat no i don't believe in that then hmm. the nature that created your body with some blood flesh and bones some mm-hmm. metabolism right that is true but don't try to push yourself and you ego lift in a gym saying that i want to impress somebody no you want to be fit you be fit now when you feel that attitude in your mind i don't think so any confusion will be there in your mind and today i can very proudly say that for the uh, question that you asked that i am very comfortable i'm very confident i went through i made my eight pack i went through an injury shoulder injury but today again i'm getting back i stopped my workout for one and a half year i hmm. never oh, i already made my eight pack somebody sees me like that oh they are not going to follow me hmm. so do- for message a fancy message to anybody mm-hmm. now the social media somehow every i'm i'm very much sometimes feel pain that everyone starts their initiative with a very genuinity but they become right. very commercialized hmm commercial there's nothing wrong as i told the first statement i said is only my opinion right. but if you are all yourself an influencer you should know what exactly you are doing and stick on to that so today mm-hmm. i'm very con I wouldn't have made that body to see. Trust mm. me, today nobody would have heard me. So that mm. body was attractive just to get your attention. That's all. Mm-hmm. That is everyone to make eight pairs, and it's not possible also. Right. But stay healthy, look good. The way you want to look good, look good, and stick onto that. Mm. That's all. That's amazing. last question <laughs> but it is related to an advice i just want to <laughs> have so many of them <laughs> so uh, just one last and that is what advice would you give a younger yourself basically your own 16 year old oh, uh, <laughs> well <laughs> it a power of uh, having a time travel back to my 16 year old Uh, yeah. what done is done okay uh, but still sometime you know um, uh, yes world has changed there is a evolution happened revolution happening lot of things happening but please settle down don't forget your uh, roots touch the sand smell the rain touch the plant feel it make friends with everything mm. and you don't need medicines you anything you don't need motivators you don't need mm-hmm. any experiences hmm That's amazing. That's really lovely. Thank you so much, Mahesh, for being yeah. here. Thank you so much for you know motivating or somewhere sharing your journey with our audience. I feel honored to be taking your interview because just the way you remember my first message, I remember my first message that I admire you. Please, <laughs> and this is who we are. So thank you so much for giving your time.